Greetings YouTube, the doctor is in. Dr. Urias Papers here coming at you with another commentary on Dungeons and Dragons. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave a question or comment. All right, we got an article today that came out seven hours ago. Um, and it is about the new, it is about a leak from, uh, I guess it came from Wizards and Hasbro about the uh, OGL 1.1, so the Open Gaming License 1.1, and um, let's see, where does it say leak? Well, we're going to do something real slick here. Uh, let's see, I did control F, ah, there it is. Oh, it won't let me search, let's, I don't want to zoom, I want to look at the word leak is what we want to find. Okay, so... Uh, it says, despite resurgence from Wizards of the Coast last month, the original OGL became an unauthorized agreement, and it appears no new content will be permitted under to be created under the original license. Uh, ah, here it is. According to an analysis of a leaked draft document dated in mid-September, so it's been a couple of weeks, and uh, we got this leaked so somehow... Something from legal at Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro got leaked out. Gizmo D. Gizmodo is talking about it. I know that the rules lawyer was talking about it. So let's talk about the original uh, SRD, which is right here. So here's the original OGL and the original SRD. Um, and uh, let's see. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So there's, there's, supposedly there's 900 words in here, um, and they have all of their product identity listed here. Um, you know, things like Illithid, Mind Flayer, Yuanti, Umber Hulk, Displacer Beast, Sigil, uh, Blessed Fields of Elysium. You can say Elysium, but you can't say Blessed Fields of Elysium. Um, so these are all property of Wizards of the Coast. Um, and so you can't actually refer to any of those um, unless you have specific permission from Wizards of the Coast. This is as of right now. So this is the OGL right now. Um, and contributor means the copyright or trademark owners who have contributed open gaming content. That's, that's um, I think that's Wizards. Uh, so... Um, this is supposed to be in the license applies to any open game content that contains a notice indicating that the open game license may only be used under no terms may be added or subtracted from this license except as described by the license itself. Uh, no other terms or conditions may be applied to any open game content distributed under this license. Um, so in consideration for agreeing to this license, the contributors grant, the contributors, that's, um, that's Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, grant you a perpetual worldwide royalty fee, non-exclusive license with the exact terms of this license to use the open game content. So, and then we get the SRD, which is the systems reference document uh, that talks about, you know, the, the things that you can use in the open game content. So back to this. So that's what the OGL is right now. Um, one of the biggest changes that came out of this leak, which is here, is as one of the biggest changes to the document is that it updates the previously available OG 1.0. That was the document we just looked at. And I pulled that off of the Wizards website um, to state that the no longer an authorized license agreement. By ending the original OGL, many licensed publishers will have to comply, completely overhaul their products and distribution to, in order to comply with it. So this is... This part here from by is uh, is the the journalist in this. Uh, this is the leaked part. Um, that the biggest change to the document is that it updates the previously available OGL. So the big the document they're referring to is OGL one point one, 
and it updates OGL 1.0 to state that it is no longer an authorized license agreement, which means it is null and void. Um, let's see. They say this is no mistake. According to the document procured by IO9, I, I don't know who that is, the new agreement states that the open game license was always intended to allow the community to help grow D&D and expand creativity. It wasn't intended to subsidize major competitors, especially now that the P that PDF is by far the most common distribution. You got to remember in time that when the original OGL came out, there really wasn't anything as, as such as a PDF. PDFs were very rare and content was still published in a written form um, in a, in a, in a printed book and now most content and so that there are costs with that that's that's what i'm trying to get at there are, are pretty big costs with printing books uh with printing pdfs there's almost no cost you know there's you own a computer program and i could i mean if i owned a computer program which i do i can write until the day is long, and I could put it out on Dungeon Masters Guild or Amazon or wherever, and anybody can get on there and pay for the PDF and download it. Uh, Wizards doesn't necessarily work with um, PDFs on D&D Beyond. They do on Dungeon, uh, Dungeons, Dungeon Masters Guild, but Paizo does, and Paizo has made quite a bit of money off of those PDFs. Um, so that's a big change. I don't think they ever foresaw the PDF being the venue for which um, these things were available. Now, in 2015, when they re-released re the OGL for D&D 5th Edition, PDFs, which is, this is seven years ago, PDFs definitely were available. I don't, I wouldn't say that they were massively available. Um, Paizo was using them quite a bit. Um, but, you know, in the last three or four years they have become the medium in which everything is is put in put out so uh what will happen to the original ogl uh the original ogl granted perpetual worldwide non-exclusive license i already mentioned that um and directed the licensees may use any authorized version of this license to copy modify but the updated ogl says that this agreement so this is an excerpt from this leak this agreement is an update to the previously available OG, OGL 1.0A, which is no longer an authorized agreement. So um, all that perpetual stuff, Hasbro can take that away anytime they want. Um, so the clarifies further in the warranty section that this agreement Hyundai governs versus your the other use guys. of the Look what Hyundai content. has, and, and what unless Honda, otherwise Nissan, stated in and screen, Subaru any don't. prior agreements between us Hyundai and Hyundai electrified no vehicles. Force, wins so remember, every the time. OGL was an opt-in license. You opted to use it, um, and you had to print it. You had to put it in your printing. So if you printed a book that used um, Wizards of the Coast rules or or some kind of material related. To the SRD, you had to stick a copy of that 15-point OGL on the back. So if you pick up um, some of the old uh, Pathfinder books, they have OGLs in them. Um, I have yet to pick up my, my new version of Pathfinder 2.0 to see if there is one in there. So uh, who will be affected by OGL 1.1? Uh, every single licensed publisher will be affected by the new agreement because every commercial creator will be asked to report their products. So remember we went over OGL 1.1 says if you're, if you're publishing something, you have to let, uh, wizards know about it. And if you're making more than $50,000 a year, you have to let wizards know about it. And if you're making more than $750,000 a year, you have to, uh, pay royalty fees. So um, the leaked OGL 1.1 draft indicates that Wizards may not give licenses uh, AA, I don't know what AA lot of time, to adjust and agree to this new policy. The document reads, if you want to publish SRD-based content on or after January 13th, 2023, that is next week, uh, and commercialize it, your only option is to agree to the OGL commercial. Um, which, if this date is true, then we should be getting the OG, the new OGL, very, very soon. 
Um, IO9 source indicated that the final version of the document was originally intended for release on January 4th. That was yesterday, which would have given companies and creators seven business days to agree and comply. Boy, that's not a lot of time at all. Um, so, yeah, we already went over the new content supposedly in the new OGL, and we went over the the royalty fees and stuff like that. Who has to register? Everybody, no matter what, Kickstarter, the power is back. So really what they're doing by voiding the previous OGL is they're saying you can no longer opt into the old, old, the old OGL. We will not. So if you print something, if you publish something, and you put the old OGL in there, Wizards is saying that isn't an that isn't in effect anymore. We we will come after you, um, and you have to put this new OGL. And there's probably going to be well, there's language in the supposedly supposedly in the new OGL that voids the old OGL and says that that one no longer can be put into published material. You have to put this one in, and that means you have to comply with everything in it. So, all right, that's what I got. That's my opinion about this article and. Um, what I think about it. So uh, go back, look at look at this, look at the Gizmo D, Gizmodo article, and um, look at um, uh, and then look at uh, the the original SRD. I do see there was a couple updates. Um, Io9 has reached out to additional publishers and creators and will update his article as new information becomes available. This article has been updated with a comment from Kickstarter's director of games, clarifying that. The 5% decrease in royalty owed on campaigns based on OGL 1.1 run on Kickstarter. Oh, so their Kickstarter is getting a discount. And I do know somewhere in here they said that they talked to um, Wizards, and Wizards uh, did not give a comment. So, all right, that's what I got for you. I appreciate everybody tuning in, and I will catch everybody later.